Jack, buddy, how we doing? Doing, doing good. Just up, up in Watertown here, prop, just grind, grind away, like practicing every day, going to the gym two, three times a week, uh, teaching, you know, giving back to the community with like giving like the little kids and older kids lessons to like be better goaltenders and like I've also done like little kids like learn to learn to play stuff so like I'm doing a little bit of everything but I'm having I'm having a blast down here glad to hear it I know you're a busy man so I appreciate you taking some time to like catch up with me and chat about a few topics that are somewhat relevant to us and definitely relevant to hockey so before we get started here uh, I was previously on your podcast uh uh, about eight or nine months ago last year. Uh, can you give everybody a brief introduction to yourself, the name of your podcast, where you play, and kind of what you've been up to over the last couple of months? Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm Jack Hudak. I'm a uh, practice goalie for the Watertown Wolves in the uh, Federal Prospects Hockey League. Played last year the Michigan Independence Hockey League with the uh, Blue Water Stars. And like, I have, a, I have a podcast called On the Spot Sports, where you can you can find it on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Apple and Google Podcasts. Honestly, wherever you wherever you get your podcasts, like any platform, it's it's available. And I talk to like mostly hockey athletes, but I've also ventured into like baseball, basketball, football, like a lot a lot of different range of sports. But like my main focus is hockey, since obviously we both we both play hockey, so like just folks on like here letting them get their story out like everyone's gone through some type of uh, type of adversity throughout their career and like battle had had some battles along the way so like i just like to have have the athletes share their story and share what they did to get over that adversity and get to the highest level that they're that they're at and like it's it's a lot of fun and like you learn a lot just from hearing these guys stories and just hearing what they've gone through and what they've had to overcome and just helps you like have like a stronger mindset and like know how to like react to different situations. How many uh, episodes does it's on the spot, right? Yeah. On the spot sports on the spot sports. How many uh, episodes are you at now? I think I'm at episode 310 right now. I believe so. Episode 3 on 311 is dropping within the next few days. So it's definitely, uh, definitely been up there. I've been doing it for four years now, I believe, since June of 2018, I believe. So it's definitely, uh, definitely been four years, but, uh, I'm having a lot of fun still. And I love giving, giving the, giving the stories out to people and like giving more new content for everyone to listen to. Yeah. That's amazing. Not only that you've stuck with it, I think like they, the statistics say that 99% of podcasts don't make it to like 25 episodes or something like that. So the fact that you've stuck with it for four years is amazing. And I always uh, appreciate the people that you have on, um, especially from the minor hockey side guys that yeah. are in the fed and you do a good job with goalies too, because what I found, uh, especially with coast league goalies is like the journey to get there is so wild for so many of them. And it requires you to like hang in there when like you, no team wants you or having to travel yeah. to a different city. And the guests that you have on are such like minor league warriors that if you know the culture, if you've ever played somewhere, like chances are like, you know, about the story of one of these guys, or you maybe played with one of these guys. And it's always cool to see like how connections work out and the guys that end up on your podcast and the, you talk to, I'm like, Oh wow. I didn't know Jack knew him or like, Oh, that's cool. Of course he knows Jack or like, Oh, that's cool to see him on Jack's podcast. So. And um, I've met, I've met a lot of people through the fed this year and like, just from them watch from like either them being a guest on my show or just watching the episodes and listening to them. So it's pretty, pretty cool. when people, people bring that up. Yeah. And I love to see it too, because there's a lot of minor league content around fighting now, like hockey yeah. fight league, fight for fighting who I had on my uh, podcast and then all the clips channels. 
Um, everybody's becoming a lot more familiar with minor hockey from the fighting side, yeah. but I think it's cool to see like the goalies and the defensemen and the journeymen that they come on your podcast and that you end up hanging out with. The Fed doesn't really have like a recap show. I know that Flow Sports and ECHL has been like trying to get some yeah. sort of like Saturday football sports or, or college game day or NFL red zone, you know, like where one portal has commentary talking about it. I don't know if you watch NHL on TNT at all. I, I used to, I haven't, I haven't in a while. I, I have, uh, we get very, I have very limited TVs, like cable stations well, up here. So I watch what I can. Well, I'm in the same boat. I, I, I don't really watch it. I only see clips that show up on social media, but I know yeah. that they spend millions of dollars on production <laughs> like that. And most of the people view that content through social media organically. And so I, I find that interesting yeah. too. Um, let's talk about uh, Daniel Amesbury in the f- suspension from the Fed. We're both players in the Fed. So we know s- that like sometimes these uh, – political dealings with suspensions and trades and the things that happen sometimes leave you scratching your head anyways. It's crazy to see um, yesterday it was announced that he signed with Fort Wayne comments of the ECHL after serving, I think like 13 or 14 games of his 18 game suspension from a hit and then also facing a recent indefinite suspension for I guess you, I guess they're calling it conduct detrimental to the league, right? Because like they're saying, like I think so. They, they, he's not a good, or they, I, I don't know, weird wording in a long legal letter about how they had to <laughs> had to meet with lawyers. Like their lawyers were like, "Yo, you can't have this guy for whatever reasons." Um, I know that he had played in the uh, like uh, Pioneer League or. Uh, whatever that's being called now, out west, uh, oh, like in no, Vail, the Mountain West League. The Mountain yeah. West League. He played with Vale, and so I don't know if they're a USA Hockey sanctioned league or if they have an affiliation. But I think that that probably perturbed the owners or the league that like he's still you know popular enough to go play somewhere, and you can't keep him from playing in your league, yeah. and that might have led to them talks about it, but. I know that over the last couple of years, there's been talks of him going up to SPHL teams, ECHL teams, um, and getting a crack. And I always thought the last year that it was strange that um, he never got a crack at like the SPHL or the, the ECHL. So it's good to see him up there. What are your thoughts on everything that's been going on and the recent news of him going up to Fort Wayne? Yeah, I, I think it's good good for him to go up to the ECHL with Fort Wayne, and like you got like legit heavyweights over over there. So it's gonna be gonna be fun to watch him see what he can do when he goes up against those heavyweights in the in the coast. And like he's an insane fighter. Like he he can chuck him. So it's like I'm curious to see how he, how he'll do up in the coast. But I think I think he'll definitely be uh be okay up there and he's going to be able to hold, hold his own. And like, it was just like, it, it's been a crazy few, few weeks for, for him. And then like, obviously with everything coming out with like the suspension and all that, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely, uh, happened so quick where it's like you're serving like your 13, 14th game or whatever. And then they saw it happen. So it's definitely, uh, definitely went, went by quick and you didn't, like, but it's good for him to go up to the ECHL and uh, get a team in in Fort Wayne. Yeah, and I think the there's just so much controversy and so much talk about it because the original hit, like we all see, there's one camera angle of the yeah. play from whatever YouTube feed or Flow Sports feed that they were using, and so it's like hard to judge a game speed play. Yeah. I know that as like an attacking forward, I've been hit that same exact way like not from behind but you overskate the net with momentum and speed with a guy that's also covering you with momentum and speed like there's going to be a collision into the boards and so i just found it strange from the beginning that it was like an 18 game suspension you know that felt personal to me yeah I think. Definitely, uh, definitely the i think 
the definitely the the angle of how like uh the the video like you can show it so many different ways and like you could get so many different angles and vantage points from from those different angles so honestly you can't even tell like if it was a high hit or if it wasn't like it's just all depends on the angle honestly yeah and you're a goalie like you there's a lot of kind of collisions that happen into posts and like behind you that even sometimes that you don't see but you can hear and like you kind of expect it right like you expect your defenseman to put the guy through the boards right yeah yeah you could you could definitely tell like the on like the sound of the hit if it was like a good hit a clean hit or or whatnot and like and like just colliding in the post as well like you you just want to have the have the lanes cleared up and like you just want your your defenseman to hit the hit the forward but it's so that game the game and the play happened so fast that like it had it's like a split second reaction before something something could happen um i didn't have a chance to uh, like go back and look on it so i could be wrong i don't know if he was like got a two and a ten for that hit originally on the play or if he was kicked yeah, out or not i don't i don't i don't really remember that so but like 18 games is a lot especially in the fed i mean that's most of the season and one of the things i've been thinking about is like the fed has like a real big image problem right now and it's the opposite of what it used to be with like the goonage like every single person that is a media personality or has a podcast has been exiled from the fed right in some ways or not at least recently i mean uh trav no longer plays in the fed you know i know that he's gonna announce that that he's got a big announcement in the next couple days or something where he's going um uh and now amesbury what he has uh what I would say is one of the biggest pot up and coming podcasts with AJ Galante yeah. and the DB trashers and talking trash. And like now everybody that was shining light onto the fed or was like a media personality is like gone. And I think that that's somewhat intentional by whether it's the owners of the fed or like the brass or league officials. And I just find that strange because anybody else would be like any other league would love this attention about having some of like the most popular players in your league playing but the fed has a problem with it like (laughs) right yeah yeah i I don't don't know why or what like causes that but like yeah like but it's definitely gone away from like the the goon the goon league and everything and like it's honestly like just playing in it right now like the skill is there and like, it's really good hockey and like these guys can go up to the next level and play in the SPHL. And then we, we even had a guy play, uh, get a call up to the coast from our team. So like we had, it's like the league has a lot of talent. Like you always see players going from the fed to the SP fed to the coast, SP to the coast, whatever, whatever it is. So it's like the league is, the league is advancing and like, it's good to see that. Cause like, it's it's very skillful now and it's very quick and it's not really leaning towards like the goon side anymore like it was what 10 years ago or something like that yeah what uh switching topics a little bit do you think the michigan and stick tricks like that as a goalie do you think the michigan should be illegal uh, that's a tough question because as, as a goalie i would never want to get scored on scored on by by michigan or any of those stick tricks but like when i when i do like lessons and like the the kids always want to see it like even my goalies are like can you do the michigan stuff like that so like obviously everyone loves seeing the michigan like i've done it before like on some of my goalies when i'm when i'm coaching them because they they're like you can't do it so i do it and uh they they get a laugh but like if i if i get scored on like that in a game uh, i'm gonna be really mad but like, I don't think it should be illegal. But I, I definitely, I definitely like seeing that in the game because it's like the, just like I said, like with the skill level, like the skill level of, of everyone is advancing, like every single year, every single day. Honestly, like you're seeing people try new things every day at practice or, or like in in a game if they have enough time. So it's good, uh, good to see that. But I definitely, definitely would hate to get scored on by by that. But I wouldn't say it should be illegal 
And that, uh, that's from a goalie's perspective. Interesting. What about like the forward traveling lacrosse goals that you're seeing now? Like guys like Brandon Hawkins, um, who's in the ECHL, plays for Toledo. Um, he does this a lot where he picks up the puck while he's skating at the goalie and does like the trick, you know, the lacrosse style and throws it at it. Uh, I know John Shivo's done it uh, a handful of times in three ice. Uh, always hockey. Uh, who's what's his name? Zach Bell. He's like yeah, the Zach greatest Bell. one on it. He, he he's making uh, a living traveling around to intermissions, doing lacrosse style goals, skating forward at the goalie. Um, you know, uh, what's his name? Rob Shrimp, of course, was like the first to do in the nineties. Like one of the first videos I saw on like the internet was Rob Shrimp skating yeah. forward at a goalie doing the lacrosse <laughs> style goal. Uh, I, I guess I we ubiquitously call that the Michigan, but it's not behind the net. But I think that there needs to be some rules around it now, especially because everybody's yeah. doing it. Like as I just long as watch... it's not above the above like the shoulders or the crossbar. I think it it's fine. But like if they like bring it like above their head, like I think there should be a somewhat of a rule for that because in if you did that in in a game and like like swat a puck and it hit your stick like above your shoulders that's a high stick so, but if you have the puck on your stick and you do it like nothing's happening and it's totally legal so like i definitely think that there should be a rule on that like you can't have it above your shoulders because it would be like the same as like a high stick rule yeah and i just think and i should i i'm trying to make it spicy so i'm gonna say it should be illegal but that's only because i don't think that like there's current rules in place that defines what should be done and what can't be done. Like, yeah. like you said, like picking it up vertically, of course, but what about just picking it up and skating with it and, and having it on your stick and having maybe a specifically designed curve and a blade that allows you to sk pick the puck up and skate with it, like traveling and, you know, should there be, I think there should be some rules around like, how you pick up the puck and how you play the puck, but I think it should be allowed. And I even think that, you know, having the stick above the crossbar, I think is like the current rule, like that your stick can't come above the crossbar or whatever. Like that's yeah. not even being enforced now on the Michigan. Cause if you watch it a lot of times, one end of the stick or the it's other over. Yeah. will come. So like they just need to define what end of the stick can't be over the yeah. crossbar. Is it the puck? What about if you're from behind? You, you you pick it up and you come across and, and put it in yeah. off his back. Like, that should be legal. But yeah. it's... It, but it, there's it's, not rules set aside for what, right. what the actual rule is. Right. And what about if you pick up the puck and then you spin the stick around and the stick leaves your hands and then you catch the stick? Should, should yeah. that be a penalty? Is that a penalty? Is it a whistle? Can you score? Like if you pick up the puck like Zach Bell does and, and throw the stick in the air and spin it around ten times and catch it. I probably think that should be a penalty then. It should be a it should be a penalty. Like Bro. automatically. Like Bro, it should be worth you two keep goals. Your, keep, your hand, keep your stick in your hand. It should be worth two goals. If you can do yeah. that in a game in the fastest league in the world. Kudos to you if you can score while doing that. Like kudos to you. Like I'll give you two goals for that. And I've been watching like the progression of it. Um, I love watching Brandon Hawkins, who I mentioned before, play. Uh, he's been in the coast for like three or four years, and he plays roller hockey in the summers. And he's uh, got some of the most amazing lacrosse style goals skating on a goalie. And it's really made me just think, like, rethink how I attack certain situations. Yeah. And be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> the control here, you know. Um, have you had a chance yeah. to take a look at the NHL All-Star jerseys for this year? I, I have a little bit, I, I, but I, I want to I tell a funny story about Hawkins, actually. All right, all right. I'm here so to listen. I, to it's, so, like, uh, so, like, over the summer, like, he was, like, participating, like, on my team for, like, an autism awareness, like, charity game. And, like, the, like you said, like, he's a very skillful guy and, like, doing all these tricks. Like, he, he was just going around the ice like going coast to coast just heel dragging people just stuck just puck under his heel of his stick and just toe dragging and just going right around guys and then just picking it up and just sniping the, the other goalies like 
he's definitely very skillful and like he's he you can tell that he's legit legitimately having a lot of fun when he's doing that like it's good to good to see him like have that success and like i think he won like mvp in the the echl all-star game this year so like it's good to good to see him doing big things and like he's definitely changing the game with how people like could do like these like skill these stick skills and like forehand michigan stuff like that so it's it's good to see for the game honestly i totally agree and and that's cool like yeah and you watch it and it or even worse you you play hockey against him and he does one of these tricks against you and you're like oh my god i know nothing but i think i think that should be the new minimum yeah you know what i mean like as far as like guys in the fed should all be able to like five years ago it was the one-timer yeah like it, it became the one-timer i should say like guys that played in the lesser leagues couldn't one-timer the puck and you didn't see any one-timer goals and then you'd watch an echl game an ahl game and you would notice that all the guys are scoring one-timers and you're like oh yeah there's a progression in here like you, in order to score against a really good goalies you have to move the puck really quick they figured out that you can just take one time slap shots and then Ovechkin's office things set, set up and that became the new minimum for a while. And so I'd like to see the new minimum be like the Michigan, you know? Yeah. The game just <laughs> keeps progressing every, every single year with diff with new skills and new things that I never thought I would see in an actual game happen, but it happens in a game. So it's just, it's good to see the progression and that every single league in North America and like all around the world is just getting better and better every single year, getting faster, getting more skillful, more physical, some, at some, some aspects. And it's just, it's a, it's a lot of fun to see. And it like makes you want to work even, even harder because you know, the next year it's going to be a lot harder to, to like, to make a team and stuff like that. And like guys are going to be shooting harder. So you just want to stay up with, with what uh with the skills that you can and just keep putting it keep getting strengths and then building your weaknesses into strengths as well when are we gonna see a goalie michigan <laughs> no idea i i i know some of us goalies do it at practice like we'll we'll do it when we're uh when the guys are shooting on the other side like we'll just michigan it bet, bet, we'll do the michigan like on our own net like in a, in a game probably probably never what do you think like what how would is that a defensive play is are they going to score a goal with it i think we'll see it maybe i just don't i can't i'm trying to imagine like situationally stew on just it pick it up and just whip it around and rim it rim it around the boards there you go and get an assist with the and, yeah. get it, and have that guy score with it. okay so that's what? definitely gonna be crazy to see though it's going to happen. I mean, like I said, the game is evolving. These guys are trying, you know, new stuff. I'm waiting to see somebody pick up it up and throw their stick with the puck on the stick. And they're going to have to make a determination or spin yeah. it in the air and then catch it and then do it. And there, it'll be yeah. like that moment in semi pro with Will Ferrell when he does the dunk and then blows whistle. He's like, wait, <laughs> foul. No, two fouls. <laughs> <laughs> you know a technical you're out of here like <laughs> something like that's going to happen where a guy's going to yeah. spin the puck around and it won't leave his hands and it won't come above his waist and it won't it won't like break these traditional rules but it'll make everybody be like holy crap i can't believe make everyone everyone make uh everyone look look at that that situation differently yeah, and speaking of looking at things differently, we'll switch to the All Star jerseys. I had a chance <laughs> to look at them, and they're definitely thought of differently. I can see that over the last couple years, the NHL has really done a, a good job of catering to like Justin Bieber and those style of uh, of Canadian fans and Austin Matthews style, which is definitely kind of uh, eccentric when it comes to his yeah. pregame fits and like what his official gear looks like and his own swag and style on the ice. Um, have you had a chance to look at him? And what do you think about the NHL all-star jerseys? Yeah, I just, I just like, I've seen, I was like scrolled through on Instagram 
through them, but I haven't really like took a deep look, but like, I just looked at it like right now I'm looking at them at this exact moment. And all I said, all I would need to say is like, they're definitely, they're unique. They're bold. They're colorful. It's a lot. It it is. It's also a lot. Like there's a lot going on, like with the. It, they're all they're super bright. Like there's a red, yellow, blue, and then there's a traditional white, and it definitely is just there. There's a lot going on, but like this, it's so hard to describe because the style is like to the point because it's just the logo and then like a star and a couple other stars, but like it's a lot like. There's maybe a little too much going on. Maybe she, they should have just kept it with the one star in the NHL logo instead of putting adding extra little stars for no reason. Yeah, I like the NHL logo, the font, and like the the shield itself. Yeah. but it, it gets a little spray painty and cartoony. Um, I don't. Yeah. Here's the thing. It, I'm I I forgot it was in Toronto. Like that should be the thing about it. Like the NHL All Star Game in yeah. Toronto, um, should like be like I, a, a Maple Leaf or something like that. Yeah, the history of hockey in Canada, especially Ontario, especially Toronto. Like I went to an All Star Game in two thousand in Toronto, and it was like all heritage stuff. Um, and I didn't even realize this one was in Toronto this year just because the jerseys don't speak to anything about it. And the color palette's like weird. It's like the primary colors yeah. um, of like bang energy cans. They're like four loco cans, like, like the red yeah. four loco. Like if, if I look at it, if I look at it, like without knowing like that it's in Toronto, I think it's maybe in like Washington, D.C. with the start and all that. And, like the capital of the of the world like it does not speak toronto to me yeah have you had a chance to or look like at anything canadian have you looked at the the girls pwhl jerseys for this season i've They're... seen i haven't i've seen a couple of them where it's just the the letter the like font down like the from like one side to one side down right yeah, and it's 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 almost pathetic. Like I feel bad, like ragging on them because I know that the girls didn't choose them. But here's the thing: like in today's social media age and digital age, you only get like one opportunity at a first impression with casual fans. Yeah, and hockey so much has always been about the cool sweaters and the cool logos, attracting new fans and casual fans and just like regular people into like the circle of everything. Yeah. Um, and I feel like they totally missed the, missed the assignment with it, making these, you know, yeah. jerseys like lame for the girls to have. I almost feel yeah. it's like the same with these all-star jerseys where it, being in Toronto and having the history of Canada, the uh, hockey hall of fame's there. Like, why are these not Stanley cup hockey hall of fame yeah. jerseys? Um, instead it's like, looks like something that, um, should be like, yeah, or a Doritos bag or like, I'm trying to figure out what store nowadays kids shop at. Like when I was growing up, it was like hot topic or pack sun. That's like what these jerseys look like. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they definitely, uh, definitely need, need some work, but, uh, yeah, it's like it, they li- could have done so much better with them and it could have like spoke like the history of hockey the his because it's in toronto the hockey hall of fame like sp- it should have spoke the history of hockey instead of the history of the nhl instead of just what I, whatever they came up with this with this cartoon look yeah i totally agree um hey i appreciate you taking the time to chat with me i'll let you go but before i go did you have a chance to see that goalie fight uh from, uh, from uh cam cam johnson and uh michael mcniven yeah dude oh yeah uh, you you gotta gotta love it like I, I texted cam right after and i was like cam cam for the win like with uh with the fire emoji like he he's a beauty like he uh and i i know he uh he definitely loved getting in that scrap. Like he was smiling ear to ear, like throughout that entire fight. 
and it's good good for the game. We'll always got to love a good old goalie fight. A hundred percent agree. And it was like spirited. Both guys were smiling and having a good time. You don't see it a lot to begin with, and especially not in the last five minutes of a game because of all the rules. But it didn't even take two seconds for that to erupt before both guys were going at each other. So I love to see it. And goalie fights are epic. Like I, I saw like the highlights and I think I think Cam pushed a guy like when after they scored like early in the first period and then something happened in the third and McNiven like tried to get in a, in a fight with one of the players after like he like knocked a guy down late or something like that after a goal. It's like just to see it all come together and both goalies wanted to go at it. Like you you got to love it. It's good, good for the game and it gets, gets the fans going and, you know, you know, the goalies are enjoying that one. And all the players, like, they stop what they're doing and just watch. Yeah, and uh, I think Kyle Newber plays for one of those teams, too. Yeah, or plays I, for the I, Everblades. I think he plays and for so, Florida, I think. I think having an enforcer and a guy that badass and that's that good of a fighter on your team makes everybody else want to fight even more. And yeah. so it's cool to see the goalies get in on it. Oh, yeah. got got to love a goal, a good old goalie scrap, and got to got to love a good old line brawl as well. Well, Jack, thanks for taking the time to chat with us, buddy. Um, where can people check out you and your podcast and everything uh, on the spot sports? Yeah, uh, thanks thanks again for for having me on. Like I I had a lot of fun. I I appreciate it. And uh, you can find me on my personal Instagram at Jack Hudak H U D E C, and then you can find me on uh, find the podcast instagram at on the spot sports with underscores between each word so on underscore the underscore spot underscore sports on the spot sports between with underscores between each word and then you can find me on youtube spotify apple google podcasts and where wherever you get your podcasts like you could find on the spot sports on it as well amazing thanks dude